Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another homeschooling video after about a month. At least it wasn't as long as the last time before that. And today I'm going to share with you a few things. I'm going to share with you first of all what our homeschool routine is so far this year. And, and then I'm going to answer two questions that I have been recently asked. One is for some recommendations for read alouds for our homeschool. And I am also going to answer how we approach biblical cosmology. I know I'm a bit ambitious with trying to answer all of these things today, but I know that I make homeschooling videos few and far between. So I didn't want to make you wait even longer for me to answer the questions that you have been asking. So I'm going to just put them all together in this video today. So first of all, let's talk about what our homeschool routine looks like this year. It looks very, very similar to what it has the last few years. So I don't know if you've seen those videos. I usually do a new uh, routine video every year. And this one's actually late because I haven't been doing homeschooling videos. So usually I will do it in maybe July. So, okay, sorry, it's September, I'm doing it. Better late than never, right? So if you haven't watched my homeschooling videos, my approach to homeschooling is what we what we would call relaxed homeschooling. I try very, very hard not to replicate school at home, and I try to give my children enough time and space and freedom to explore their own interests, but I do think that it's very important that there are some basics, some foundational learning that, that they still get, and the structure really helps us throughout our day. So this year, we are homeschool I'm homeschooling five of my own children. I'm homeschooling my 11-year-old, my 13, 14, 16, and 17-year-old. So that goes from, you could say, 6th grade to 12th grade, even though I don't really count by grade levels. I know that our school district does. I, I don't go by that. But it's, it's from 6th to 12th grade if you're looking for that. I'm also homeschooling my son-in-law's sister, so she she's also in the mix as well. So if you hear me mentioning six different things that children are studying, it's because she's in there too. So I'm just going to give you just the basics of what our routine looks like every day. And I have to say that our first and last six weeks of homeschool every year are what is called unschooling, where the children just can explore and do whatever they want. It's basically living as if every day is a, is a weekend or every day is summer vacation. So with that being said, I am what is considered to be a year-round homeschooler. We start our, quote, new homeschool year the second week of July every year, and we will homeschool for six weeks on and then take a one-week break throughout the entire year. And then we take a six-week break at Christmas time and then a six-week break at, well, during during the spring months, spring late spring, early summer. So, so when I say that we're doing unschooling for six weeks, that, that will usually start in July, and then we will start doing unschooling again, usually around April or so. But once we get back into the routine part of our homeschool, what here are some things that we do every day. What we do every day is Bible. This year, I have been reading through the book of Daniel with my children, so that has led to some interesting discussions, to say the least. Every day, the children have to do silent reading. And this is usually a book that they choose. Sometimes, depending on what unit study we're doing, I might have them read a certain book. So far, it has been like that. They've been choosing all of their own books so far. I do have to approve it. You know, I, I don't want my 12th grader, for example, reading a book that's geared towards like fifth graders, obviously. But yeah, they, they choose their own. Every day, they do math and we use ctcmath.com. We went through so many different math curricula in our homeschooling years. This is my 16th year of homeschooling. We have tried Saxon, we tried Abeka, we tried um, Christian Liberty Press, we tried, uh, it wasn't Matthew C. No, it was teaching textbooks, but not for very long. We didn't try that one. Um, Life of Fred, I don't remember if I said that already, but we tried Life of Fred. And the one that seems to be helping us the most is ctcmath.com. And I have been using ctcmath.com now for probably six or seven years. It's been quite a while that we've been using it. And that is the only subject that my children will actually do on the computer. 
nothing else is done on the computer. Yeah, they might look, you know, research something on the computer if they're doing a report or something like that, but there are no classes on the computer other than math. And even with that, I, I still sit next to them. They do it individually. I sit next to them, watch the video with them. And then while they're doing their math, I'm just there in case they have any questions so that, you know, they don't have to wait for me to go from, to bounce from child to child to child. I'm right there next to them. And that is probably what takes the longest in our homeschool is simply because I do have them do math individually, but I prefer it that way and they prefer it that way and I'm okay with the time that it takes. Another thing that we do every day is a read aloud. I read aloud to my 14, 13, 11, and son-in-law's sister. So we'll just say my extra child. Um, I read aloud to them every day. I gave my two oldest sons the, the choice if they wanted to listen to the read aloud or if they wanted to do another activity while I was doing the read aloud. And they both chose to do their own activities. So while I am reading to the girls, which this year, so far, right now I'm reading the Red Pyramid to them by Rick Riordan and it's part of the Kane Chronicles. So this is this is really good. You know, if you know if you heard of Percy Jackson, this is just part of the Egyptian mythology series. So that's what we're reading for our read aloud. And then my boys, one of them while we are doing read aloud, he he practices his guitar. So he takes guitar lessons and he uses that time to practice his guitar. And my other son is writing a book. So he uses that time to, sometimes he'll write in his book, sometimes he'll work on character development. He also is an artist, so he is he likes to draw the characters for his book. So anything related to his book is what he is working on at that time. So those are the things that get done every day. Now for the rest of the things I alternate, you know, one, one day, We'll say alternate day one and then alternate day two. It just depends. So if we're talking about day one, besides all the things that I already mentioned, my children will be doing something called notebooking or journaling. I, I will leave links in the description if you don't know what any of these things are. Notebooking is basically, I have them pick one topic that they really love or that they want to know more about. They might not love it yet, but they might want to know more about it. And they will focus on that topic for their notebooking and they will research it throughout the year and they will just add to their notebook whenever I tell them to do notebooking that day. Or sometimes they'll even do it just because they want to. You know, a lot of times my children will ask, can I put, can I make something for, for my notebook? And it'll be a Saturday. And I, and I always tell them, you don't have to ask me if you want to do something something like that. You just do it. Other days I will have them do journaling. Journaling is basically free writing. They're allowed to write anything that they want. Now my oldest son, since he is writing his book, he does use his journaling time to, to write his book. And I'm completely fine with that, of course. Now some of the things that my children are using for their notebooking topics this year are one of them is doing animals of Africa. Another one just chose animals in general. Uh, one is doing nature, there's one who's doing a sewing notebook, and then there's one who's doing mythology, mythology of all kinds. He wants to explore all the different types of mythology, and then one that is focusing on fantasy. Now, for day two alternates, we like to do something called alter uh, alternate days. It's not an alternate. I'm acting like it's a person. Day two. So on day two, we will work on our unit study. We like to do those a lot too. I'll leave a link in the description if you don't know what unit studies are because I'm, I'm, it'll take too long to explain it here. But right now, our unit study that we are working on is just a general unit study on courage. And so they will do two activities having to do with courage. And this is coming from a biblical perspective. So sometimes that activity for the unit study might be copy work. You know, there, I might have them copy some verses out of the Bible that have to do with courage. Other times, and these are examples of things that we have already done this year or that we will be doing soon, we will read from the Bible. Um, we will read about Daniel and David and Goliath and Joshua. We watch videos on YouTube about these things. Usually shorter videos, about eight minutes long is what I try to stay around. So yeah, so we have, we've already watched a video on Daniel and tomorrow they will be watching videos on Joshua and David and Goliath. And we're going to be reading from the Bible also about Joshua. 
we've already had conversations about courageous people and I've asked them, you know, what, who are some courageous people that you know? They can be someone that you know in real life, someone from a book or a movie or someone from the Bible. So we had a really good discussion about that. Uh, and then even when we watched the video about Daniel, you know, and they, they got into Daniel being thrown into the lion's den that day, I, since mo well, they all like animals. I had the girls, not my older boys, but I had the girls write some facts about lions or they could write a report. It was just up to them what format they wanted to do it in. But I had them look that up. My boys don't do the unit study. The girls kind of stay together. And then the boys, since they're older, they they do their own work. And I, they have what I call focus topics. So one of my boys, his focus topic is mythology. So he uses that for his notebook, but he also uses that for his focus topic, which basically means that he, he delves even further than just notebooking about it. He will watch videos about mythology. Sometimes he'll watch movies that, that are about some sort of mythology. He will draw things having to do with mythology. He will do more researching, more reading, anything at all related to mythology he will do during that time. And my other son, just like with journaling, he's working on his book. That's why I call them focus topics because they are very, very focused on, on those things this year. And since they're older, I, I like to give them the leeway to do that. So as you might have guessed, doing these things does not take a whole lot of time. I will usually start around 10 o'clock in the morning. I will do math and, oh, I, I think I said language arts. I'm not sure. They do language arts on day one. We're just using workbooks. So we're using, uh, who is this by? Flash Kids. I think it's Harcourt Language Arts. And then they only go up to sixth grade that I could find for that one. So my, so we also use Spectrum for language arts as well. And so that I will usually do with them right after they are done with math, just because this is like the closest thing to school that we really get that, that they have to do. So I will try to be there with them while they're doing that as well, if they have any questions. So yeah, so I start around 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll do math and language arts with three of the children. And then I like to sit with my husband before he leaves for work. Uh, then we have, we do chores, we have lunch, and then we start back up again at one. And till I finish math with the other children and do Bible and read aloud and whatever else we have going that day, we're usually done by like 2.30. So figure from like 10 to like... 11 30 and then from 1 to like 2 30 and keep in mind that I am homeschooling six children and I am doing math and language arts separately with every child so you're probably thinking well that's not a whole lot of learning that happens during that time because you're probably thinking of how long children are in school for well first of all I think we most of us realize that what is happening in school there's not a whole lot of learning going on but as a relaxed homeschooler, I do think that it is very, very important that we allow children to follow their own interests, to find their own passions, the things that they want to learn about. So some things, and, and during this time, like after they're done with school, I just tell them just to explore things on their own. And I don't even give them suggestions unless they ask for one. They will typically just find things to do that they they just whatever they want to do for example my son might practice his guitar more um one of my daughters likes to take my my other daughter who lives four doors away she likes to take her dog for a walk so she'll she'll go dog walking some of them will go for bike rides um my 11 year old she loves to make build animal enclosures on minecraft and then she will look up animal facts and write them down. So she kind of does the, she kind of does those two things together. Now that one, she she's also a bit of a writer, just like my oldest son. So my son, he will he will work on his book, of course, during that time. And my daughter with the animal enclosures, she also recently started writing. And I kid you not. So this is oops, I'm moving the whole thing. This is her story. It is. I don't know if you can see this. It's probably about 20 pages. She writes front and back, and she did this in about two or three days. So, and she just does that in her free time. It's not something that I assigned to her. It's just something that she wanted to do, so she does it. So 20 pages she got done in two or three days. And now she hasn't really been working on it a whole lot for, for the last couple of days. And she, she kind of goes in spurts with that. 
But again, that's okay because she's still doing other productive things. And I just like to see what, what they come up with. Some other things that they might do, arts and crafts. Most of my children love to draw. Um, and then crafty things like just the other day, they had some stamps pulled pulled out and they were all over my table. Not stamps like you put on an envelope, but the stamps with the ink. And they were making little cards with them and little postcards and they were doing that. And I also have some children who are really into disc golf. So they will go disc golfing. Um, they will walk to the park. So just lots and lots of stuff like that, that, you know, they can use to be productive, to not be glued to a screen and just to stimulate their minds and to help them explore, you know, their, their passions. And, you know, you never know possible career opportunities or ideas for when they're older. So that's really what our homeschool routine looks like. Um, I don't think that I missed anything. I hope not. I'm looking at the whiteboard right in front of me. Oh, they also, every day, I did forget. Every day I give them a word of the day that has to do with the courage unit study. And even my boys, I give them a word of the day. So they just write the word, look up the definition. So they keep a vocabulary notebook and the word of the day just goes in there. Very, very simple. Now for some book ideas. All right. I don't have all of these books with me and a lot of times I actually just got them out of the library, but I'm going to give you some ideas of books that we have really, really enjoyed as a family. The Tripod series is one. I've talked about it in a few of my videos. I think that it's really relevant to the whole reset idea. Just, yeah, you you will notice a theme going in my in my read alouds, just so you know. It's basically the same sort of things that you would expect to find on my channel. So the Tripod series was a hit here. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, of course. Um, the Kane Chronicles, what I told you that we're reading now, which is basically Percy Jackson in Egyptian mythology form. We also did the Magnus Chase series too, also by Rick Riordan. I cannot remember the name of the series. I will leave links in the description to all of these books though. It's the Magnus Chase series, and that series by Rick Riordan is on Norse mythology. The only one that I read that I did not really like that much was the one on Roman mythology that might be called The Heroes of Olympus. I'm not sure. I don't remember what that series was called. It was the Roman mythology one. That one was the only one that I didn't really care for. But the other three that I mentioned, so Percy Jackson, the Egyptian mythology one, and the one on Norse mythology... Very, very interesting, and my children love them. I also read The Smoky God to my children, and that I actually have here on my channel as a uh, read aloud. So I've done an audiobook version of that, so you could always use that if you don't want to read it to them your, yourself. My children love that, although I do have to say that I did add commentary in my Smoky God one because it was coming from a very heliocentric perspective, and I couldn't keep my mouth shut when I was reading it. So there is that. So you might want to check that out before you might decide to use that. One book that I haven't read yet, but that I would like to is The Iron Republic. I have that book. I ordered it a few months ago, but I have not read it yet because I always, I always have so many books to read. So I want to read it first just to make sure that a, my children will be interested and B, it's appropriate because I don't really know what's in it. I do know that it's about beyond the beyond the, the ice wall. So that's why I, I found it really interesting. It was recommended by a lot of people. So possibly the Iron Republic, again, read that one at your own risk or better yet, read it first before sharing it with your children. Another book that is really by an author who isn't very well known. I believe his name is Ian Redding. He wrote a book called Dragon of the Month Club. That was really good. It was supposed to be a series, I think. And then he never finished it. And I'm like, no, why didn't you finish this? It was really good. But that one book is worth it too. There's also another series by another re relatively unknown author. Her name is A.H. Richardson. And she has a series of book about a girl named Jory. And the first book is called Jory and the Magic Stone. My children really love that as a read aloud. And in fact, my two oldest boys reread it and are now reading the second one too because they they liked it that much. My children always enjoyed the Dolaire books like the Dolaire book of Greek myths, the Dolaire book of Norse myths. Not only is it written very well, but it has beautiful illustrations that will really captivate your children and you probably. And my children also really enjoyed the Little House series. And I know people are going to comment here and say, did you know that Charles Mason was a Mason? Yes, I know that. 
And that actually sparked some interesting discussion as we were reading the Little House series. So I, I still read it to my children because it's interesting and it's something that we enjoy doing together. Now, the last question that I'm going to be addressing today is biblical cosmology because I have set, I've had several people either ask me in the comments or email me um, about ideas for biblical cosmology curriculum. And I have to say that I myself do not use a curriculum for biblical cosmology. As you, as you probably noticed, I'm very laid back about our approach to everything. So that fits right in with that. I do know that a few, several years ago, there was a group on Facebook. I think it might've been called Flat Earth Homeschoolers. And in that group, someone did develop a biblical cosmology curriculum that they were offering a PDF for. I'm not sure if that's still there, but that's the closest that I know of to a biblical cosmology curriculum. If I come across any others, of course, I will always share them here. But for me, I don't use a curriculum. My children learn about biblical cosmology through the Bible. That's like the main thing, the Bible and through conversations with me. And, you know, a lot of times they will sit in and watch videos as I'm watching them. And really, they they were completely immersed in videos like that with me when I was exploring the whole thing. Because I've mentioned before that I really, really dove deep into biblical cosmology for about 10 months before I was willing to say, okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is true. And so they, they really had so much exposure to it. And so now it's basically just conversations and, you know, they're, they're very bold about it. Like I, God love them, you know, cause they, they did not have that indoctrination that so many children do get in school. Um, so for them, it was just like, oh, well, that's pretty simple and easy to understand. Yeah. Okay. And they have no issues with it. So a lot of them are wrestling with dealing with it when it comes to their friends. Cause of course their friends are incredulous and, you know, and their friends are Christians, but my, my one son, especially he's like, mom, can I send this to, and then insert friend's name here. And he'll ask if he can send it to him. And I'm like, I don't know, it's up to you. But they're like, oh my gosh, it's right in the Bible. How can they not see that? So it's, you know, with us, it's just very laid back. It's just a matter of fact thing that we talk about. And it's not something that I really make part of school, you know? So anyway, that's all that I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one down below. And if you like my work and would like to support my, my channel, I will leave a link in the description to my channel membership, or you could just click on it right on my channel page. And I hope you have a great day.